Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. It's a lovely winter's afternoon up here in northern New Zealand, so I thought I'd go out in nature and have a walk and film the intro to this video. So recently I've been doing quite a few colour studies designing paintings, which I love to do. Colour studies are awesome because they not only make great little paintings, but you can do loads of them quite quickly and then decide if you want to develop them further and perhaps do larger paintings which is what I'm probably going to do with this one that I'm going to show you in the video. So in this video I'm going to show you this sunset coastal seascape that I've painted and I'll give you some tips on mixing the colours, painting sunsets in general and how to create realistic looking paintings. So grab your paintbrushes, sit back and let's roll the tape. I'm painting on an 8 inch by 10 inch linen panel and this is a medium weave Belgium linen that's oil primed that's mounted to Baltic birch and these are pre-made by a company called Sourcetech at canvaspanels.com So these are great for doing small paintings or plein air paintings just really convenient to use and they're also easy to frame as well I'm sketching out my composition with a mix of burnt sienna and liquid original and as I'm using oil paint the liquid original thins the paint and it also speeds up the drying time so very convenient especially if you want to get lots of paintings done. As I sketch out the composition I'll go over the paints I'm using. The brand I'm using is Blue Ridge Oil Paints and the colours I'm using includes titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue so it's a really simple palette here. Now if you want to get your hands on some Blue Ridge oil paints they're available from blueridgeoilpaint.com and I've put the link in the description box below. So as I sketch out the composition I've gone for a slightly higher horizon. Remember you should never have your horizon line in the middle of the composition and the main focal area of course is the setting sun. This painting is inspired by the Wellington coast in New Zealand and I'm working from some photos I took around 10 years ago. Whenever I begin a painting I always start by painting the darkest values and shadows first and we'll find our darkest darks in the foreground, whereas in the distance darks are not as dark. The first thing I do is I start painting the shadows in these rocks in the foreground and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna and a little bit of alizarin crimson. As I work back into the painting the shadows in the rocks and cliffs in the distance are going to be getting lighter but at the same time I want to communicate that really bright setting sun. So this is all going to be about values and contrast. We want our values generally darker in the foreground so it really emphasises the bright light of the sun. But also another thing we can do to communicate bright sunlight is to carry across some of those colours emanating from the sun. Now in the sunlight we're going to be having colours such as whites, yellows and crimson. So we need to make this bleed into the rock shadows as well for those distant cliffs. The colours I'm using for the background cliffs is a mix of ultramarine blue, titanium white, alizarin crimson which is then going to make a violet and then I mix in yellow ochre. So yellow being opposite to violet on the colour wheel that's going to cancel the two colours out and we're not going to get green here but we can get some nice warm tones that can help communicate that setting sun. As I work my way to the cliffs in the distance I've introduced a lot more yellow ochre, titanium white and alizarin crimson into the mix so these cliffs here they kind of look a pinkish yellow colour. Also the value of the cliffs is much lighter than the values of the rocks in the foreground and value is how light or dark a subject is. Now once I've established my main dark values in the scene I've quickly already built up a tonal dynamic which is going to create atmospheric perspective. This is what we want because it means that the painting will look realistic and three dimensional. So the next thing I work on here are the clouds and these are going to be lighter in value than the shadows in the cliffs. The cloud shadows are a mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white, some burnt sienna to desaturate and some alizarin crimson. I'm trying to maintain colour harmony in the painting and we can do this by using 
common colours throughout, so I've actually used these colours in the rocks already. This is going to tie these zones together and make the painting look more harmonious. Once I've painted the clouds, I get straight into painting that setting sun. Starting off with a mix of titanium white with a small amount of yellow ochre, and that's going to create a warm, bright white. Now as we move away from the sun, there's going to be halos of colour around it, ranging from yellows and then into crimsons and then into the blue sky itself. As I work my way outwards from the bright sun, I start introducing more yellow ochre into my mix so that the value is getting darker, but then also the colour is becoming a bit more saturated as well. And then, further out, I start introducing alizarin crimson. When using alizarin crimson, you're only going to need a small amount of it. It's a really great colour for rounding off mixtures, but if you use too much, it can actually make your colours look awful, so be careful with this. We only need a tiny amount. Now, as we get further away from the sun, the yellows emanating from it are going to get further away and starting to disappear into the blue of the sky. So I'm going to be mixing in blue. Now, because I've been using alizarin crimson in my mix, when it's mixed with the blue, it's going to create violet. And of course, alizarin crimson is a violet anyway. So when it mixes in with the yellow, it's not going to create green. The blue of the sky here itself is just a simple mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white. Now I'm using quite big brushes here for the size of the canvas that I'm painting on, mainly number five flat brushes. The brushes I'm using are made by a company called Rosemary & Co. And I've been using these brushes for years. They're really nice to paint with. If you want to get your hands on some Rosemary & Co. brushes, I've put a link to their website in the description box below. But anyway, using bigger brushes, I can cover ground more quickly and create more gestural brush marks. They're really good for painting landscapes and seascapes, especially skies. So next I'm going to paint the main body of the ocean and the breaking waves and white water in the foreground. Now the sea is reflecting the sky to a certain extent and I also still want to maintain colour harmony so that the sea ties in with the sky and the cliffs in the background. So I'm going to be using the same colours in the ocean that I've used for the sky and the sunset. So I'm using a mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white. Then there's also a little bit of alizarin crimson in there and some yellow ochre. Now I vary the mixtures to certain degrees, creating darker values where needed, especially in the breaking waves. So in this case I've used a lot more ultramarine blue. But the presence of the alizarin crimson and the yellow ochre is going to help desaturate the blue so that it's not so intense. Again, I'm using number five flat brushes and just marking in the major zones of the breaking waves, which are in shadow, and some of those foreground areas, which are also in shadow, especially from the rocks. The foam and the white water, especially from the barreling waves, is going to be lighter in value, but keep in mind that it is in shadow. For this, I've used a mix of mostly ultramarine blue with titanium white and a little alizarin crimson. If it's still looking a bit too saturated, I can just knock it back a bit with a little bit of burnt sienna. So burnt sienna is a dark orange and orange is opposite to blue on the colour wheel. So when these are combined, they cancel each other out. As I was painting this, I was getting my colours down quite quickly. And the last thing I was doing here was adding the suggestion of a few highlights on the breaking waves. And this is a mix of titanium white with some yellow ochre. Once I'd marked in these highlights, I then went back across the painting and just restated some of the dark values. So the rocks in the foreground, and then also those clouds as well, which I made a little darker. I also worked on the water in the foreground. It's pretty turbulent, but just creating the illusion of moving water and preparing it so that I can paint more details on the painting once it's dry. Now at this point in the painting, I decided to let it dry. I'm happy with the blocking in stage here, and this is where you want to check that your painting is working, the colours and values are working, and that it's going to be easy to proceed when you start adding details once it's dry. Overall, we want to keep those values a little bit darker so that we've got plenty of room to add lighter layers later on in the painting as we build up the detail. 
It will then be towards the end of the painting that I'll be thinking about adding my lightest values. The painting is now dry and what I'm going to do is just think about building up detail within the painting. But I'm not going to be using massive amounts of detail, in fact I want to maintain a painterly effect, so the brushwork's still going to be relatively loose. However, that's not to say that loose paintings can't look realistic, because they really can. I want to communicate the energy and beauty and atmosphere of the scene that I'm painting. I start with the furthest zone away in the painting, and that's the sky and clouds. And I start adding some more layers to them, so I've made those clouds a little bit darker. And also, that warm yellow light around the sun, I've increased the saturation. Again, I'm using the same colours that I used during the blocking stage, which was mostly a mix of yellow ochre, titanium white, and a little alizarin crimson. I continue to further refine the shape of the clouds and also add some darker layers to the cliffs and those rocks that are in the midground. Again, using the same colours that I used before, and this was mostly a mix of ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, titanium white, and yellow ochre. When it comes to painting some of the highlights on the breaking waves and the white water in the foreground, I'm now using a filbert brush which has got a nice rounded edge to it. You can use the broad end of the brush for thick brush marks, but the rounded edge you can make much finer marks with them, so these are actually perfect for painting breaking waves. I've used a mix here of titanium white with some yellow ochre, but I've made the value lighter than the previous layer and this is going to help to build up the three dimensional form. Now there's not that many highlights here in the foreground, just a few. I don't want too many because I really want the attention to be drawn on that setting sun. Once I've painted some of these highlights, I restate some of the darker values in the breaking waves and the turbulent water in the foreground. Of course I'm using the same colours I was using during the blocking stage, mostly a mix of ultramarine blue, a little alizarin crimson, yellow ochre and some titanium white. To create the illusion of ripples and small waves within the water, I keep in mind that they're reflecting the sky and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with titanium white. I used a mix of number 3 filbert and flat brushes as well just to get some different textures within the water. When I worked on the rocks these are mostly in shadow and quite deep shadow so there's not that much definition with them or not too much reflected light either, but I did want to paint the suggestion of some reflected light within the rocks just to create a three-dimensional form there. So I've used a mix of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, titanium white and alizarin crimson, but only a little titanium white just to paint the suggestion of structure within the rocks. A bit of reflected light there that's going to give it some shape. The rocks that are towards the breaking wave I wanted to create some warmth in them so it helps to communicate the bright sun. So here I've mixed in yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and a little bit of titanium white. I worked on this painting over a couple of sessions and at this point I decided to leave it to dry again because all that was left was to add the final details and this is where I was going to be adding my lightest values as well. And then I paint the bright sun itself, and this is titanium white with just a dash of yellow ochre in it. White is as light as we can go when it comes to values, so in painting the sun we want to create a bright sun by mixing titanium white and just a small amount of yellow ochre, which is just going to create a warm white. Now I can use that same mix just to add a few more highlights to the breaking waves and white water, although I mix in a bit more yellow ochre as I don't want it too bright. I use a number zero round brush here and I paint some highlights on the rocks. I use my existing mixture that I've used for the waves and just added in more yellow ochre and alizarin crimson. Also a little bit of ultramarine blue as well. I decided to add a few more clouds in the background just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And then I finish up the painting by marking in those lighter values in the reflected light of the breaking waves and the white water in the foreground. Now if you'd like to learn more about painting seascapes then check out the painting resources I have on my website. 
I've got some free written painting tutorials on my blog which you can copy and I've provided reference photos as well if you'd like to have a go at painting them. If you'd like to delve further into painting landscapes and seascapes then check out the full length painting tutorial videos that I have available from my website at samuelerp.com. If you sign up to my email list I'm giving away a free ebook on introduction to oil painting and this covers things like the basics of oil paints, how to choose an oil paint, mediums, brushes, how to clean your brushes, and there's a section there on colour theory, including the colour wheel and values. I've also put some links to some interesting websites as well to get you inspired. So there's all sorts in that ebook, which you can get for free by signing up to my email list on my website. Now you can also get instant access to all of my painting tutorial videos and a new video every month by subscribing to my Patreon channel for just $5 a month or $51 a year if you want to subscribe annually and you'll save 15%. So I actually have even more videos on here and there's over a year and a half's worth so it's kind of like a landscape painting course. And as well as the painting videos there's also lesson notes and reference photos that you can use as well if you'd like to have a go at painting them. I've also set up a telegram group so that you can chat to other artists and share your artwork. It's a really good group. And I'd like to thank everybody that subscribed to me on Patreon or purchased a video from me from my website. It all really helps me to keep the paintbrushes in my hands and so that I can carry on making videos for you. So I had a lot of fun painting this sunset seascape here. This is only a small painting, but I think I'm gonna use this as a color study for a larger artwork. What do you think? Do you think I should paint a larger version of this? Leave me a comment in the comments section below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. It all helps with the YouTube algorithm. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to paint some sunsets. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.